Certainly. Here's the beginning of a spine-chilling, unexplained horror story said to captivate your YouTube audience in the small, seemingly peaceful town of Elmswood, a peculiar fog rolled in every year on the same night, the night of November 3rd. The residents had long whispered about its unnatural behavior, how it slithered through the streets, enveloping everything in a suffocating embrace, but vanished by dawn as if it had never been. Yet, no scientific explanation could account for its annual appearance nor its eerie selectivity in what it touched and what it left untouched. This year, Sarah Jennings, a freelance journalist with a keen interest in paranormal phenomena, arrived in Elmswood with the goal of documenting the mysterious fog. Her arrival stirred the town, the locals were wary, their eyes filled with unspoken warnings. Sarah, undeterred by their reticence, set up her equipment in the heart of the town square, determined to capture whatever might occur. As the sun dipped below the horizon on November 3rd, the temperature dropped sharply, and the first tendrils of fog crept into the town. Sarah observed through her camera lens as the fog grew denser, more assertive, swirling around street lamps and crawling along the pavement. Her heart raced with excitement mixed with a touch of fear, as she noticed the fog seemed to pulsate with an almost sentient quality. The town was eerily quiet, the usual night sounds muted by the thickening fog. Sarah's breath formed little clouds in the air as she walked through the mist, her camera recording every moment. She noticed that electronic devices began to malfunction, her camera's screen flickered, and her voice recorder emitted a low, garbled static. Determined to get to the source of this phenomenon, Sarah ventured toward the old part of town, where the fog was notoriously thicker and tales of disappearances were most prevalent. The cobblestone streets, lined with ancient oaks, led her to the heart of their historic district, where the ruins of the old Elmswood Manor lay. The manor had been abandoned for decades, a relic of a bygone era, its once stately facade now crumbled and overgrown with ivy. Legend spoke of the manor's last inhabitant, Lord Charles Elmswood, who was said to have vanished into thin air one foggy night, never to be seen again. His disappearance marked the beginning of the strange phenomena, and since then, the fog seemed to emanate from the ruins themselves. As Sarah approached, the air grew colder, her devices malfunctioned with increased frequency, and her flashlight flickered erratically. The manor loomed before her, its dark windows like empty eye sockets watching her every move. She felt a chill that wasn't just from the cold, it was a primal fear, a warning to turn back. Ignoring her instincts, Sarah entered the manor through a broken archway. Inside, the fog was so thick it swirled around her feet like a living thing. She could barely see more than a few feet in front of her, but she pressed on, guided by the faint glow of her dying flashlight. The interior of the manor was a labyrinth of hallways and rooms, each step forward raising the dust of ages. The walls were covered with old portraits, their faces obscured by years of decay and cobwebs. Sarah felt the eyes of the painted figures watching her, their gazes piercing through the gloom. As she navigated through a particularly narrow hallway, the floorboards creaking under her weight, she heard a sound that made her freeze in her tracks, a soft whisper, echoing through the halls. It was a voice, or perhaps many voices, melding into a single, sorrowful tone. Leave, leave, leave. It said, over and over, a spectral warning too tangible to ignore. Sarah's hand trembled as she raised her camera, the recording light flickering weakly. The whisper grew louder, more insistent, and then, from the depths of the fog within the manor, a figure appeared. It was shadowy, indistinct, but unmistakably human, its movements slow and deliberate. It approached her, and as it came into the faint light of her flashlight, the details of its visage became clearer, it was Lord Charles Elmswood, or rather, something that once might have been him. His face was pale, his eyes hollow, his expression tormented. He reached out a hand, and Sarah, too terrified to move, could only watch as it came closer, the whisper turning into a plea, help us. 
The story breaks here, leaving Sarah face to face with the spectral figure of Lord Elmswood, her fate hanging in the balance as the fog envelops everything, obscuring the line between the living and the dead. Sarah's heart pounded in her chest as the spectral figure of Lord Elmswood approached, his hand outstretched as if begging for salvation. His eyes, deep pools of despair, locked onto hers, transmitting a century's worth of sorrow and entrapment. Sarah could feel the cold emanating from him, a chill that seemed to seep into her very bones. Help us, free us. Lord Elmswood's voice was a mere whisper, but it filled the air, resonating against the crumbling walls of the manor. The fog around them thickened, swirling with increased intensity as if reacting to his presence. Compelled by a mix of fear and compassion, Sarah took a tentative step forward. How can I help you, she asked, her voice a mix of curiosity and dread. What needs to be done? The apparition pointed towards a grand staircase, shrouded in shadows and mist. The seal, break the seal. His words trailed off as he began to fade, becoming part of the fog once more. With the last of her courage bolstered by the need to uncover the truth, Sarah moved towards the staircase. Each step was labored, the air growing colder and the fog becoming almost solid, like a barrier trying to hold her back. She reached the top, finding herself in a long hallway lined with ancient doors, each one carved with intricate, fading symbols. She warped the corridor, her flashlight been cutting through the darkness, revealing layers of dust and decay. The whispers continued, now joined by soft, echoing footsteps that seemed to come from nowhere and everywhere at once. The atmosphere was oppressive, each breath Sarah took felt heavy, laden with the anguish of the trapped souls. At the end of the hallway, she found a door different from the others. It was larger, made of dark wood with a large, iron seal in the center, this had to be what Lord Elms would refer to. The seal was adorned with archaic runes and appeared unbroken, its edges fused to the door as if melted by some supernatural force. Sarah examined the seal closely. She didn't understand the runes, but the arrangement suggested a binding spell, one powerful enough to trap what lay beyond this door. She touched the seal, her fingers tingling from the cold metal. The moment she made contact, a violent gust of wind erupted, throwing her back against the opposite wall. Dazed but unrelenting, Sarah stood, her resolve hardening. She approached the seal again, this time more cautiously. She needed to break it, to undo whatever ancient magic had been used to imprison the spirits within. Remembering a small, iron chisel she had in her backpack, Sarah retrieved it and placed the tip against the seal's edge. With a deep breath, she struck the chisel with all her might. The impact sent a shockwave through the hallway, the sound magnified, as if the whole manor reacted to the assault. She struck again, harder this time. The seal began to show signs of wear, small cracks appearing along its circumference. The temperature dropped suddenly, the air filled with the cries of the damned, pleading for release, warning of danger, their voices a cacophony that threatened to overwhelm her senses. Sarah persevered, striking the seal repeatedly until, finally, with a resounding crack, it shattered. The door swung open slowly, creaking ominously. Beyond it lay a room shrouded in darkness so profound it seemed to absorb the light from her flashlight. As she stepped inside, the temperature plummeted further, her breath visible in sharp, frosty puffs. Inside, the room was circular, the walls covered with more runes that pulsed with a faint, eerie light. At the center, a large crystal hovered above a pedestal, its surface swirling with a smoky, black mist. The crystal pulsed rhythmically, like a heart beating in the dark. Sarah approached the crystal cautiously. As she drew nearer, the whispers intensified, urging her on, warning her back. She reached out a hand toward the crystal, her fingertips brushing its cold surface. The room filled with light, blinding and intense, emanating from the crystal itself. The story pauses here, with Sarah's fate intertwined with the mysterious crystal's power, the manor alive with newly awakened forces, and the veil between worlds thinner than ever. 
The light that burst forth from the crystal enveloped Sarah, penetrating her very being. Her eyes, unable to adjust, saw visions that flickered between moments of horrifying clarity and maddening obscurity. Faces twisted in pain and sorrow, scenes of ancient rituals gone awry, and shadows that seemed alive, twisting and writhing in the depths of the crystal's core. The air crackled with raw, supernatural energy, the room itself alive with the echoes of a thousand lost souls. Sarah felt an overwhelming pressure in her mind, as if the spirits were trying to communicate directly with her consciousness. Their voices were a discordant chorus, filled with desperation and anguish, each spirit seeking redemption or revenge. The intensity of the visions increased, and she realized she was witnessing the memories trapped within the crystal, memories of the damned and forgotten. Amidst the chaos, one voice began to stand out, stronger and more coherent than the rest. It was Lord Elmswood's voice, filled with a deep, mournful regret. We summoned what we could not control, he intoned, his voice echoing around the room. Banded here to protect the world, but trapped ourselves in the process. You must undo our mistake. Free us all. The crystal pulsed faster, its light growing more intense. Sarah felt as if it was probing her, assessing her ability to fulfill the task. Despite the terror and confusion swirling within her, a surge of determination rose up. She knew what she had to do. Reaching deeper into her backpack, Sarah retrieved an old tome she had brought, a collection of protective incantations and binding spells. She flipped through the weathered pages until she found what she was looking for, a ritual of unbinding and release. The words were ancient, a mix of Latin and a language she didn't recognize, but she felt a power in them, a potential for liberation. With the book open in front of her, Sarah began to recite the incantation, her voice steady despite the tumult around her. The room vibrated with energy, responding to the spoken words. The crystals pulsing synchronized with her cadence, its light shifting colors, from dark ominous gray to a brighter, clearer white. As she continued the incantation, the spirit's voices began to calm, their cries turning into whispers of hope. The room brightened gradually as if dawn was breaking within its walls. The oppressive air started to lift, a feeling of peace slowly replacing the dread. But just as the ritual seemed to be reaching its culmination, a sudden, violent tremor shook the manor. The ground beneath her feet cracked, and the walls groaned as if in pain. Sarah stumbled but continued her recitation, her voice now a shout over the cacophony. Then, without warning, the crystal shattered, sending shards flying through the air like glittering rain. A blinding light exploded from the center of the room, enveloping everything in pure, radiant energy. Sarah shielded her eyes, the incantation now a silent prayer on her lips. When the light finally dimmed, and the tremors subsided, Sarah cautiously opened her eyes. The room was transformed. The ominous runes on the walls had vanished, replaced by smooth, unmarked stone. The air was clear, the oppressive weight of centuries lifted. Stepping out of the room, Sarah found that the hallway was also changed. The portraits on the walls now showed peaceful landscapes, and the air was filled with the gentle sound of music, as if a lullaby was being played softly in the distance. Feeling a mix of relief and exhaustion, Sarah made her way back to the entrance of the manor. As she stepped outside, the first rays of the morning sun touched her face, warm and soothing. The fog had completely cleared, and Elmswood looked serene, bathed in the light of a new day. But as she walked towards the town square, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was still amiss. The townspeople, who should have been relieved at the lifting of their perennial curse, looked at her with a new wariness, an unspoken question in their eyes. Had she truly freed them, or had her actions unleashed something else, something that had been waiting for its chance to emerge? The story pauses here, leaving the fate of Sarah and Elmswood hanging in the balance, the peace she achieved shadowed by the uncertainty of what might have been set free along with the spirits. As Sarah walked through Elmswood's town square, the early morning light did little to warm the chill that had settled deep in her bones. 
The townspeople's eyes followed her, reflecting a mixture of relief and deep-seated fear, a silent testament to the uncertainty her actions had wrought. The town, once veiled under the thick, supernatural fog, now lay stark and bare. Yet, as the day progressed, a subtle disquiet lingered in the air, like the calm before a storm. Sarah's sense of unease grew, the shattered crystal had freed the trapped spirits, yes, but had it also released something else, something unintended. Determined to understand the full consequences of her actions, Sarah returned to the manor. The building stood silent, the malignants gone from its aged walls. However, as she approached the cellar where the crystal once pulsed with dark energy, a faint whisper brushed against her ear, too low to be made out but filled with a menacing promise. Stepping cautiously into the cellar, Sarah's flashlight sliced through the darkness. The room was empty, the shards of the crystal swept away as if they had never existed. Yet, the air felt charged, electric, as if the room was holding its breath. She moved deeper, her steps echoing ominously off the stone walls. At the center of the room, where the crystal had hovered, there was a new mark on the pedestal, an intricate sigil, not carved but seared into the stone as if by intense heat. The design was unknown to her, a complex pattern that spiraled outward, each line etched with precision. Sarah took photos of the sigil, intending to research its origins. As her camera clicked, the temperature dropped sharply, her breath visible in the air, and a heavy dread settled over her. The whispers grew louder, a cacophony of hisses that seemed to come from the very walls of the manor. She left the cellar quickly, the feeling of being watched intensifying with each step. Outside, the sky had turned a heavy, leaden grey, clouds rolling in fast. It was unnatural, the way the weather had turned so quickly, mirroring the darkness that had once clung to the manor. Back in the town, Sarah visited the local library her mind racing as she pored over old texts and digital archives. Hours slipped by as she researched the sigil, her only lead. It was late afternoon when she finally found a reference in a dusty tome of arcane rituals. The sigil was identified as a gate mark, a symbolic portal used in ancient times to bridge realms. The text hinted at its use to either contain or release entities from beyond the human plane. Sarah's blood ran cold. The implications were clear and terrifying. In shattering the crystal, she might have broken a seal meant not just to trap the spirits of Elmswood but to keep something far more dangerous at bay. As she absorbed the gravity of her findings, the library lights flickered, a sudden wind slamming windows shut. The air was thick with the scent of ozone, and a low rumble filled the space, not from the skies, but emanating from the earth beneath. The town was reacting, responding to a change she had set in motion, a change that could not easily be undone. Sarah gathered her notes and left the library in haste. Outside, the townspeople were gathering, pointing towards the forest that bordered Elmswood. Dark clouds had gathered there, swirling around an unseen center, a vortex that seemed to pull at the very light. Whispers among the crowd spoke of shadows moving at the forest's edge, shapes that were neither human nor animal, their forms twisting in the gusts of an unnatural wind. As night began to fall, Sarah knew that whatever was coming was only just beginning. The release of the spirits had been a prelude, a minor chord before the crescendo of the true storm that was to come. The gate mark was a warning, a sign of what was now unleashed. Her next steps were unclear. She needed more knowledge, more power to confront whatever lay within the storm. But one thing was certain, Sarah Jennings' story was far from over. As the first drops of a cold, heavy rain began to fall, mixing with the cries of an emboldened wind, Sarah braced herself. She was now part of Elmswood's history, woven into its destiny, a destiny that was, as yet, unwritten. The story pauses here, the night young and restless, with forces old as time stirring in the shadows of Elmswood, awaiting their moment in the unfolding tale of darkness and light. As the storm intensified, Sarah made her way back to the safety of her temporary residence, an old inn on the edge of Elmswood. 
The innkeeper, Mrs. Holloway, met her at the door, her face etched with concern. It's not safe tonight, dear, she said, her voice a tremulous whisper over the howling wind. Something's awakened in the town, something old and angry. Sarah nodded, her resolve firm despite the gnawing fear. I know, Mrs. Holloway. That's why I have to stay. I need to understand how to stop it. The elderly woman sighed, her eyes sad and knowing. Then at least let me help you with what I can. She handed Sarah a small, leather-bound book. This has been in my family for generations. It's said to contain knowledge of the old ways, knowledge that might help you now. Grateful, Sarah took the book, its cover worn and the pages yellowed with age. She spent the night poring over the ancient text by candlelight, the power having flickered out as the storm reached its furious peak. The book spoke of rituals and countermeasures for supernatural disturbances, some passages cryptic and others alarmingly clear. One ritual, in particular, caught her attention, a sealing rite that required an understanding of celestial alignments and the natural ley lines that converged in Elmswood. The text suggested that the town itself was built upon a nexus of these powerful lines, a place of significant energy potential. Armed with this new knowledge, Sarah formulated a plan. As dawn broke, casting a weak, grey light through the storm clouds, she ventured out into the beleaguered town. The streets were deserted, the townspeople having barricaded themselves indoors against the unnatural phenomena that had besieged Elmswood. Making her way to the town square, Sarah observed the sky, noting the position of the emerging sun and recalling the alignments discussed in the book. She sketched a rough map in her notebook, marking key points where she felt the energy was strongest. Her path was clear, she needed to visit these points and perform parts of the ceiling rite at each one to re-establish the boundary that had been broken. The first point was near the old church, its spire a lonely silhouette against the brooding sky. As she approached, Sarah felt a palpable tension in the air, a resistance like pushing through unseen barriers. She set up her first array of symbols from the book, chalk in hand, drawing on the ancient stone of the church's foundation. No sooner had she completed the first symbol than a scream rent the air, a sound so filled with torment and fear that it froze her blood. It came from the direction of the forest, the vortex of dark energies she had seen the night before. Sarah hesitated, torn between continuing her ritual and investigating the scream. Her decision was made for her when she saw a figure stumbling out of the trees, its movements erratic and pained. It was a young man she recognized from the town, one of the few who had dared talk to her about the legends of Elmswood. He collapsed several yards from her, his body convulsing as if in the throes of a terrible nightmare. Rushing to his side, Sarah tried to comfort him, her mind racing to diagnose his affliction using the snippets of lore she had gleaned from Mrs. Holloway's book. His eyes snapped open, fixating on something behind her. It's coming, he gasped, his voice a ragged whisper. The guardian of the gate. It knows what you're trying to do. Sarah turned slowly, a cold dread settling over her. The air at the edge of the square twisted and darkened, coalescing into a form both majestic and terrifying. A figure emerged from the shadows, tall and imposing, cloaked in a swirling mist that seemed to absorb the light around it. Its eyes were deep voids, and it carried a staff that thronged with a sinister energy. You cannot seal what has been opened, it intoned, its voice echoing around the square. Not without the key. The story holds here, with Sarah facing the Guardian, her mission clear yet obstructed by forces beyond her understanding, her next steps as crucial as they are dangerous. Sarah stood defiantly before the Guardian, her fear tempered by an unwavering resolve. Then I will find the key, she declared, her voice steady despite the swirling darkness before her. The Guardian's void-like eyes seemed to narrow, assessing her determination. Many have tried, it whispered, its voice like the rustle of dead leaves. All have failed. The key is lost to this world, hidden by those who feared its power. Sarah's mind raced, 
recalling a fragment of a legend she had read in Mrs. Halloway's ancient book. It spoke of a key forged from the heart of the earth, capable of unlocking and sealing away the darkest of energies. Then it is not lost, just hidden. And I will find it, she vowed. The guardian laughed, a sound that chilled the very air. So be it, seeker. But beware, the path you choose is fraught with peril. The key is guarded by the shadows themselves, and they do not yield their treasures lightly. With a final ominous sweep of its staff, the guardian dissipated into the mist, leaving Sarah alone in the cold dawn. She knew her journey was far from over, it had taken a new, more dangerous turn. Determined, Sarah returned to the inn to prepare. She gathered old maps, books, and her notes, plotting her course to find the key. Each piece of the legend she pieced together pointed to the ancient forests north of Elmswood, a place where the veil between worlds was thin and shadows walked freely. Days turned into weeks as Sarah trekked through these haunted woods. She encountered spirits, creatures of shadow and mist, each a guardian of the secrets she sought to uncover. Through cunning, courage, and the knowledge gleaned from the ancient tome, Sarah overcame each challenge, delving deeper into the heart of the darkness. Finally, in a clearing marked by stones older than time itself, Sarah found it. The key, pulsing with a light that seemed to banish the darkness around it, lay atop a pedestal of twisted roots. As she approached, the air filled with a cacophony of whispers, warnings, and wails of despair, but she pressed on, her eyes fixed on her goal. With the key in her hands, Sarah felt a surge of power, a clarity of purpose. She knew what she must do. Returning to Elmswood, she made her way to the town square, to the very spot where the veil had first been torn. There, under the light of a blood moon, she began the final ritual. The incantation spoken, and the key raised high, Sarah watched as the ground trembled and light burst forth, sealing the tear in the veil. The darkness that had plagued Elmswood drew back, its screams fading into the night, its power waning under the strength of the sealed gate. As dawn broke, Sarah stood in the silent town square, the key now a mere ordinary relic in her hand. The shadows had retreated, the spirits found peace, and the town of Elmswood awoke to a new beginning, free from the curse that had haunted it for centuries. Exhausted but triumphant, Sarah knew her journey was not just about sealing away darkness, it was about proving that even in the face of overwhelming odds, courage and determination could illuminate the darkest paths. As the sun rose over Elmswood, Sarah Jennings prepared to leave, her legacy etched in the annals of the town's history, her story a beacon for those who might one day face their own shadows. The story ends here, with the town restored and the darkness contained, awaiting perhaps another tale, in another time.